oil industry. Residents and elected officials in Santa Barbara County had seen the effects of oil's boom and bust cycles on their local economy for decades. Valuing the unparalleled beauty of their corner of the world, they fought hard to prevent a new wave of efforts to exploit oil reserves that began in the 1960s. President Johnson's Interior Department, looking for ways to finance the war in Vietnam, auctioned off oil leasing rights in the Santa Barbara Channel. The bids submitted amounted to nearly $1.3 billion. Drilling commenced almost immediately. I, I could see the thing coming because there was a rush and there were inadequate regulations. In 1968, Union Oil acted as the operator for a coalition of four companies that bid a record-setting $61.4 million for one lease tract. They definitely, you know, do try to cut corners. That's what happened with the 1969 oil spill. Uh, Unical convinced the federal government to allow them not to um, install casings all the way down um, the level that they were going to drill. And what happened is there was a blowout below um, where they installed the casings. Now, had they installed the full casings, the blowout probably wouldn't have happened. Union Oil's cost-cutting measure proved to be a tragic mistake. The worst of Santa Barbara's fears were realized on January 28, 1969, when a blowout occurred at Platform A, shattering the fragile caprock on the ocean floor and allowing massive amounts of oil to begin bubbling into the water and drifting ashore. There was an attempt to keep it quiet. The only people who knew about it were the people that were on the platform at, at, the, at the time. The next day, no one ashore had yet been informed when Bob Solon received a phone call at his desk at the Santa Barbara News Press. Late in the morning, we got a call, and they, it was a male voice. It said, the ocean is boiling around platform A. And uh, I started to ask questions, and this person said, the ocean is boiling around platform A, goodbye. And I don't know to this day who that person was. We woke up that morning and it smelled like tar and went outside. I thought someone perhaps was tarring the road, but uh, they weren't. And soon enough, uh, neighbors started to gather also and ask what was going on. And someone tuned in to the local radio news and discovered there'd been an oil spill down at the beach. So uh, we all went down there like lemmings. The community just started uh, pouring out onto the beach. And um, what we found was shocking. The oil kept coming. It was very heavy, black. Uh, in time, uh, the water was all black. The ocean was dead. It was an uh, incredible sight. Mr. Sathry, here we are at Santa Barbara's once beautiful harbor. How serious is the oil situation? It, it has really deteriorated. It's a, a bad situation. It's a complete mess throughout the, the marinas and uh, has affected uh, every boat in the harbor. How bad is it, uh, Mr. Sathry, uh, as far as uh, facilities at the harbor here and the yachts that are tied up in the other watercraft? Well, every, every one of them have been affected. They've all got oil on them. They all need to be cleaned, and there's some uh, uh, paint damage. Um, all of our uh, uh, marinas, the facilities themselves, are quote, coated with uh, uh, this thick, oozy oil, and it's going to take a long time to mess up. Do you think the harbor will ever get back to its original state? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure that it will be cleaned up eventually. Of course, they've got to stop that oil flow out, out there at the wells before there's uh, much that can be done here. The event 
produce, ruptured the bottom of the ocean that we call the cap rock, which was very fragile. And that's when the oil and the gas escaped. And uh, how, do you, how do you control anything like that? Offshore Santa Barbara area, there are natural seeps that have been going on for nobody knows how long. Mm -hmm. Again, it's oil and gas accumulation under the bottom of the ocean and not enough cap rock to really contain it. The ocean bottom was fragmented and uh, it was uncontrolled. So all you could do is wait till it came to the beach and then clean it up. And the high tech technique at that time was straw. Uh, dump straw on the beach and then pick up the straw which absorbed the, the oil. And that went on for weeks. It wasn't just local residents who were horrified by photos that showed how the oil spill blackened the beach and resulted in the death of thousands of birds, fish, and marine mammals. It was one tragic scene of a bird and a vehicle had run across it and it was saturated with oil, obviously dead. And we called it the picture that went around the world because we put it on the, on the I guess it was AP wires, <clears throat> and it was picked up and it was seen in newspapers all over the world. But the news press ran a little box on page one every day. Oil spill in its 310th day, when will it end? The president of Union Oil issued the statement, I don't like to call it a disaster because there's been no loss of human life. I'm amazed at the publicity for the loss of a few birds. Well, we don't know how many birds there were. We don't know how many marine mammals were affected. Um, marine life and, and, and shore bird life was seriously affected. But, well, Union Oil looked at it that way. I can't say Santa Barbara did because there were more people volunteering to go out and try and clean oil off the birds. Uh, than the, for anything. Old Guard groups like Audubon and Sierra Club uh, became very active. Uh, new groups like Com Community Environmental Council, <clears throat> the Environmental Defense uh, Center. And it was because of all the organizations that formed in response to the 1969 oil spill, as well as all of the federal and state laws that came into play that led to the local communities realizing that they needed some help on the legal front to be able to force agencies to do the right thing, to try to stop um, disastrous activities um, that would affect the coast. And that's actually why the Environmental Defense Center was formed. We were formed to help all the other environmental groups from the Sierra Club to Get Oil Out and Audubon Society and Surfrider to help them have the tools to try to block more uh, damaging offshore oil and gas development. It would be a year before the oil stopped oozing from the hole in the ocean floor, years before tourists would begin returning and fishing would begin to recover, and decades before beach visitors could leave the beach without tar on their feet. What no one would have expected was that the positive effects of the oil spill would last longer than the negative. It was called the environmental shot heard round the world because we suddenly became aware of the perils mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our environment by these kinds of things. And then uh, the chairman of the board of Union Oil, you know, just tried to fluff it off and then that, that made people madder, you know. And pretty soon you had a sense of rage by the people that their coast wasn't being looked after. The oil spill helped create the public pressure that caused Congress to pass and see signed into law by Richard Nixon the Clean Water Act, the Clean Air Act, and the National Environmental Protection 